When it comes to leveraging, this is a constant tip that I share. What is your cash flow times 12 in a year? You gotta make sure your numbers are correct in order to get an accurate number on here. What is your cash flow times 12 in a year? Take that number, then you take 66% of your credit limit. So if you have a $50,000 HELOC, 66% of that, 33,000. 33,000 is your chunk limit, max limit. That's the same number when it comes to investing as well, right? Which leads me to my next point about do not over leverage. We are in a season, I've been saying this for a while now, to a lot of people, clients, subscribers, you all, I've been saying it, saying it a lot, and I'm gonna keep saying it. You're about to get exposed, okay? It's 2023. If you are in this room right now, there's 77 people watching. If you are in here right now and you have over leveraged, maxed out any of your credit cards, line of credit, HELOC, because you forced the Velocity Banking to work or you did not follow my rules, you made a bigger chunk because you thought you could do more damage, I'm telling you right now, now is not the time to be over leveraging, especially when interest rates are continuously going up and up and up. Now, granted, they might they might stop. And that's what we're hoping for, that when the when the uh, feds get together again, that they do not increase the rate. I think if anything, they're going to freeze it. Right. If anything, they won't increase it, but they'll keep it the same. Just still really high. I think the prime rate right now is eight point two five percent. You can double check that for me. But that's what we, we don't want to do that. We don't want to over leverage. OK, let me give you a example of over leveraging when it comes to investing. OK, I've got a lot of clients now because I've been working with people for three, four five years. So I help them pay off all their debt. And now we're getting into velocity banking for investing purposes. Right. So that means we're leveraging. OK, cool. That's great. Well, now we need to run some numbers on making sure we don't over leverage let's say you have a heloc let's say you're in the house let's say you're debt free and you got a first lien home equity line of credit and your credit limit is five hundred thousand dollars right and you and you owe nothing right it's at zero balance so let's say that you're cash flowing because you paid off all your debt let's say you increased your cash flow to five grand so 5,000 times 12 is what? 60K a year. So your cash flowing, say 60,500, uh, 60,000 cash flow in a year, 500,000 times 66% is 330,000. That is your chunk range. Okay. Now, that's a pretty big gap. Would you agree? Sure is, Denzel. That's a pretty big gap. So Denzel said, to determine your chunk, you do 66% of the line of credit. So, boom, I'm going to chunk what? 330000 to a real estate fund or start a business, fix and flip properties, right? You're going to throw this three hundred thirty grand into crypto, forex, options, da-da-da, whatever it is, right? Makes sense. Does it not? No, it does not make sense. Why? They did not follow the other part of the damn rule. They just follow what they like, right? They didn't listen. I helped them get out of freaking debt and then they want to go betray themselves, right? Because they don't follow all the rules. This number gives you a clear idea of truly how much you can actually leverage and then what is at risk, right? So the 60K means that in one year, this case, this particular example here, this person is generating $60,000 a year in net cash flow, principal capital, right? Net capital. That's pure net capital, no borrowed funds. So 330,000 minus 60, that's $270,000 now at risk, technically. The whole 330 is at risk, right? But in the first year, right, say you have 60 grand on hand and now you're going to invest. So you got the 60 and you have this line of credit at 500,000. And then 66% of that is 330,000. Here is a good math equation to run. If I invest 330,000 and it goes south, how many years will it take me to recover from that investment? So you do the 270 divided by 60 grand. So what we're saying here, 
what we're saying is you have 4.5 years of cash flow at risk. You have 4.5 years of cash flow at risk. You have 54 months of cash flow at risk. So you want to ask yourself, does it make sense for me to put 54 months? Right? You got to say it differently sometimes, right? I'll say it this way. Uh, what's 365 plus? You got you to gotta say it different ways so it hits different. Are you willing to put $270,000 of future cash flow at risk? Are you willing to sacrifice 1,638 and a half days of your life at risk for this potential investment return where 330 will turn into 660? So it'll double in 4.5 years. Are you willing to take on that risk? You have to ask yourself this. It's important because if you're just looking at the ROI, this is the sexy stuff. If you're looking at just the sexy stuff, ROI, tax deduction, asset, compound interest, right? All this stuff. That's the sexy stuff. That's what the content creator, the influencer, the financial advisor, whomever is, is selling you on. That's their job, right? Trying to make money. You need to look at this. How much cash flow am I putting at risk? What else am I putting at risk? Am I putting my marriage at risk, ladies and gentlemen? Do I tell wife I'm about to do this? Do I not tell wife? Do I hide that from her? Do I not let her know that we just paid off all our debt, we became debt free, and then boop, I put us right back into debt, 330,000. Investment goes south. Now you're left with the bag, not the bag of money. You're left with the heavy bag, a debt, 330 at <laughs> a 9% interest rate. So not only are you paying the 330 back, but you're now paying interest. So, so now, not only were you just set back 4.5 years, you then tack on the interest, you're now set back 6.5 years, right? Plus that capital that you lost, 60K. So it's really a total of like five and a half, almost six years you set yourself back. It took you three and a half to get out of debt. And then because of habits, because you didn't you didn't get to experience debt-free life. See, see a, a good amount of you wanna get out of debt. And then when you become debt-free, you go right back into debt. Now, that doesn't have to be a bad thing if you follow the rules, right? If you stick to fundamentals and principles. So someone can become debt-free and then immediately go back into debt, right? To me, that's not a bad thing. It's just a, it's a decision for to solve for a purpose. So they became debt-free, they went back into debt, but they didn't follow the rules. So instead of chunking 300, uh, instead of chunking somewhere in between 60 and 330, they chunked the whole 330 because they could maybe potentially make 50,000 in returns every year, 70,000 in returns every year. That was the hope and the prayer, right? Because they only looked at the sexy stuff, but they didn't run this part, right? What all are the things that I'm putting at risk by making this investment? Just run that and you can base it off of your cash flow. You can say, oh, okay, that's how much is at risk. Got it. Cool. Yeah, no, I'm not comfortable um, potentially losing 4.5 years of my life and I'm 52 years old. Yeah, mm, maybe not. Even at 27 years old, I'm not really, I'm not willing to risk 4.5 years of my life. No way. Even at 27 years old, no way. Now here's where it will make sense. I will risk 4.5 years of my life on me, on Denzel, not some investment that I don't have control over. All right. So if if I was doing this move, 330,000 on Denzel to improve my business to scale, I would take that bet because I know in my business. For every dollar I invest in my business, I'm getting roughly almost $3 back. That's my average. Anywhere from 2 to $3, I'm getting that back, right? So if I got a capital injection of money and I put it in the right places, that's only just going to build a stronger base. I'm willing to make that kind of a bet. But a lot of you are making investments where you just took control of your life, became debt-free, rerouted all that money you were wasting, all to just give it away to a, a money manager, a wealth manager, a financial advisor, a, a guru, an influencer. You just did all that work just to give it all away. What in earth? So that right there is trauma, okay? You got something going on in your life that requires therapy, requires a pastor, requires digging deep, right? Because that was not a logical decision. That was an emotional one, right? We need to determine why. 
why that happened.